Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another riveting episode of Star Wars The Complete History. Today, we will be reading the Second Sith War and possibly the Sith Civil War. No, not possibly. We're going to be reading the Sith Civil War. That is a guarantee, ladies and gentlemen. So now that we're in a time constraint trying to finish this book, because I'm trying to finish this book before the release of the next movie, um, I may be upping this to twice, maybe three times a week. So without further ado, we're just going to get right into the reading. So the Second Sith War, 3958 to 3956 BBY. During their string of victories in the Mandalorian Wars, Revan and Malak had acquired a taste for rebellion. In the spirit of seeking out what the Jedi Council would deny them, the two discovered artifacts created by the pre-Republican Rakata civilization on Dantooine. Kashyyyk, Tatooine, Manan, and Korriban. Knowledge gained on Korriban, the Sith tomb world, may have proved too tempting for war commanders steeped in blood. They abruptly announced themselves to the galaxy as new Dark Lords of the Sith, Dark Raven and Dark Malak. Many of the Republic crewers and Jedi Knights who had fought with Raven and Malak in the Mandalorian Wars, joined their cause, eager for the chance to again serve the two great champions. At the shipyards of Forost, Ravon and his accomplices seized control of the bulk of the Republic fleet. This brash action initiated the Second Sith War. Ravon's fleet commander, Admiral Sal Karath, emit intimidated hundreds of key military worlds by threatening to slag their cities through orbital bombardment. Ravon and Malak took up Sith holdings left dormant after the First Sith War, establishing a link between their ideology and that of Exar Kun, despite their lack of a connection to the Sith species itself. Many citizens admired this take-charge mentality, and much of the Sith territorial expansion was the result of Republic defections. Rivon revitalized an existing Sith training academy on Korriban, ensuring that a core of Dark Jedi would be ready to defend the new Sith Empire. Ravon and Malak, on the trail of Rakadan clues they had discovered, located a colony of surviving Rakadans on the species' original birth world of Rakata Prime. Though the Rakata had fallen into relative primivism since their Golden Age many millennia in the past, their Starforge remained in orbit and possessed the power to create fully formed machines at the flip of a lever. Bolstered with ships of Rakatan design, the Sith forces drove the Republic to its knees. Absolute victory seemed within Raven's grasp. The Jedi Knight Bastille San, a master of battle meditation, helped prevent the, Je the Republic's defeat, and soon the Jedi arranged a trap for Darth Ravon. In the midst of a pitched fleet battle, Basila and a strike team boarded Ravon's flagship and subdued the Sith Lord. Dark Malak treacherously opened fire on his own master's ship, but Basila escaped in her cap with her captive in tow. The Jedi Council could not The Jedi Council chose not to imprison or execute Ravon. Instead, they forced scoured the memories from the fallen Jedi's brain, placing Basila in charge of a powerful warrior who was now little more than a blank slate. The council hoped that an amnesia Ravon might help lead them to Starforge without present presenting a threat to the Republic. Malak, now the reigning Sith Lord, took Darth Baron as his apprentice and pushed him ahead in the war. A major engagement over Terrace nearly netted him Basila, as well as the combatant who had once been Ravon. In Malak's effort to capture them, he leveled Tarvis and destroyed the Jedi Academy on Dantooine. Basila, working with Ravon and a number of hanger, hangers-on, including Mandalorian clansman Kanderos Ordo and Ravon's former assassin droid HK-47, found the location of the Starforge and launched an assault ship to sh shut it down. Aided by the Full Republic fleet, Ravon, now in possession of the memories that the Council erased, killed Dark Malak, and destroyed the Starforge above Rakata Prime. The Sith Civil War, 3951 BBY Ravon's fate following the Battle of Rakata Prime is unclear, but the Sith Empire that had sworn fealty to Ravon, and later Malak, now found itself rudderless. Darth Baron, <clears throat> Darth Bandon, 
had also perished during the recent fighting, and so a host of potential Sith Lords rose up to fill the void. Darth Sion, Darth Kriya, Darth Taya, and Darth Nilus were among the many to take advantage of the Republic's inability to safeguard its holdings after the Second Sith War. As the Outer Rim descended into chaos and the Sith once again took control, the surviving Jedi publicly disbanded. By going underground, they hoped to escape assassins that had been dis dispatched by Darth Sion. Working to uncover the Sith in secret, salvation came instead from a former Jedi who had been excommunicated for assassinating Ravon during the Mandalorian Wars. This hero, aided in part by Candorous Ordo, the new Mandalorian heading that headed... The new Mandalorian heading the reaming Mandalorian clans uncovered the origin of the Sith plot to wipe out the Jedi. Eventually, the Sith destroyed themselves in a bloody civil war, decimating the ranks of the evil cult. At least one Sith Lord survived, however, ensu ensuing, ensuring the perpe perpetuation of the Dark Line for centuries to come. So guys, that's all we have for today. I'm sorry if there were some pronunciation issues. I'm sorry if it sounded a little funny. I am a little sick. My nose is actually running as I'm trying to make this commentary, and I'm trying not to let it bother me. So next week, we will be reading Repercussions Through the Republic and the New Sith. But until then, uh, I want to thank you guys for watching. If you did enjoy, don't forget to leave a like rating. Subscribe for more awesome videos. If you only kind of do so, you can favorite the video. And uh, may the Force be with you.